Dear Lord, on this New Year's Eve, and as we anticipate the year ahead, I ask for your blessing on everyone for abundance of joy, love, health, peace, and prosperity. Thank you for being with us as we celebrate this evening and follow in our traditions. Help us to always be grateful for all you give us, and may we be a blessing to others. In your name we pray. Amen. Under the Prairie Sky Through fields of grass Through bush and into the wilderness Down rivers, streams and lakes This is the land on which my people were born They were called half-breeds, Michif, Atipim, Shriach, the people who own themselves. Resilient, hard-working, and proud, my people have always been. The sash I wear, it speaks to my journey, it speaks to my family, It speaks out beyond time when I no longer can. Woven like the day and the night, bringing two worlds together, united as one people, one nation here under the prairie sky. Welcome to our traditional Métis New Year's Eve celebration. It is my honor to tell you the story as we have been told by our elders and family about the celebrating of the new year. There are those who still practice the customs today. The new year was a time of special celebration in Métis communities, often more celebrated than Christmas. Our Métis celebrations were about bringing family home to celebrate and everyone knew they were expected home to visit and see their family and friends in the community. It was the time for feasting, visiting, and for singing and dancing. From east to west, north to south, across the Métis homeland, celebrations were very similar in their traditions. In some areas, the practice was influenced by the French of the 1800s, where the celebrations started on New Year's Eve and extended until January 6, All King's Day. New Year's Eve at midnight, it was customary for the salute of the guns. Fathers or elders, eldest male of the household, would take two rifle shells, open the back door of the house and fire a shot to the west to see the old year out, then open the front door and fire a shot to the east to welcome the new year in. Yeah, father was a, a good farmer, he uh, had a good head, but mom, my mom and, and dad were uh, super nice parents. Uh, loved them to pieces. They uh, well respected within the community, uh, involved as much as they could even if they had 11 children. And so a lot of my roots come from, from uh, my parents and the community people who all had the same mannerism. Uh, it was a loving family, that's all I can say. Uh, New Year's Eve was always kind of a slow uh, for us. Uh, we kind of be waiting for New Year's Day. Uh, about what I, what my, my, when I get together with my brothers and sisters, my older brother, he's uh, 80, 80, turned 80 this year, and older sister was uh, uh, Vic, Vic uh, Bowden, yeah. And uh, he tells me of the stories when uh, uh, they, uh, they would be going to, par uh, to parties, and then at, at, at midnight, uh, the, the, uh, the community people uh, uh, would, go outside and uh, shoot their, their shotguns uh, to make people aware that they're still up, they're still welcoming the, the, uh, the, the new year. And it was really nice to have that feeling that uh, we're, we're not alone that, uh, in the middle of the night to, uh, uh, to, to, to hear that there's somebody else is out there and doing the same thing. So there was a sense of uh, connection. 
uh, and and uh, uh, rejoicing that uh, we're we're coming in uh, the, the starting off the new year together. Like yeah, it was good. They came by car and and uh, would stop in, do a few minutes, wish the best wishes to the family, and move on. But I learned a lot more just being with Jill and listening to stories, particularly his older brother Vic, who's very good at storytelling, and uh, he would tell us what they used to do in the, the Métis uh, and all of the uh, New Year's celebrations. Following the gun salute, you would sit down for a traditional meal with your family. For many, the gatherings took place at the house of their elders, parents or grandparents, often included wild meats with vegetables, lay ground beef made into meatballs, rolled in flour and boiled for a soup, bannock, la galette, or bangs, fry bread, potatoes, confire berries in sauce, torche, which is a meat pie, and pushin, boiled cake. Families would then be on the move, visiting from house to house to toast in the new year and enjoy the feast prepared for you. Hello, my name is Linda St. Cyr Sarek and this is my husband, Vinko Sarek. We would like to welcome you to our home today to share a traditional Métis meal with us. Before we get going, I would like to maybe open up with a prayer and a blessing of the meal. Dear Lord, we thank you for this wonderful day. We thank you that you are so gracious and providing this food for us. We thank you also for the family that was unable to be with us today, but they're in our hearts. And uh, I would like to offer uh, my uh, heartfelt um, prayers to all the families that cannot be together at this time. But alas, we will share together anyway. Amen. I'd like to go over some of the uh, foods that I've prepared. Traditionally, it was done by my grandma and my aunties and my mom. Uh, and I tried to emulate that as much as I could from what I remembered. I was such a little girl. Well, a traditional Métis dinner when I was growing up was uh, consisted of pretty much what we see here. Growing up, we had a lot of chicken, we had eggs. Um, my grandpa had a big farm uh, with lots of vegetables, big gardens, and so we grew most of our food. And uh, we only had to go to the store for a few things, maybe some sugar, salt, stuff like that. And we would walk to the store uh, hand in hand with my grandpa, because my grandpa was my mentor and he was my idol and he's he was my everything, so uh, we were always together. We spent a lot of time together. He taught me a lot of stuff. And um, of course, whenever I wasn't in the barn there doing things with him, I was in the house with my mom and my grandma and watching them. I didn't cook or I didn't do anything, but I watched. And uh, I think I learned pretty well because I think I'm the only one in my family who co cooks traditional food to this day. But uh, I'm going to start with the uh, ragout au boulette, which is meatballs uh, drenched in some flour. And uh, I added some uh, carrots and uh, potato. It's pretty easy to make. You just uh, mix your the meat. And what I've done is I add onions and uh, the usual onions, garlic, celery, and uh, salt and pepper. Of course, you always have to have salt and pepper. And uh, my boulette soup, the boulettes themselves are made with bison and beef. And uh, you uh, boil this together and uh, you uh, boil it for quite, quite a while because you want the, the meat to cook right through. And uh, then I added uh, the uh, potatoes and some sliced carrot and uh, some, um, I, I made a, 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 a paste uh, with uh, flour and water and added it to that to thicken it a little bit. 
because otherwise the soup would be too runny. But uh, as you can see, it's just it's just right, and it's got a little bit of a gravy to go with it as well. And this was uh, traditionally served, and it still is to this day. I think everybody is just used to uh, having this meal, and uh, it's one of our staples. Uh, the other food that we serve was rababu, which is made of deer meat, again, potatoes and some uh, vegetables. Corn and peas is uh, pretty much what we had at home. We usually, uh, we served what we had. We also have uh, some pemmican made of uh, bison and uh, regular boiled potatoes and uh, some carrots uh, glazed with a little bit of butter and some honey that I found in the cupboard. And of course we have the bannock. We can't have a meal without bannock. And today, this tourchere, which is a traditional meat pie, traditionally was made with pork and uh, uh, used very little beef. But I, the way I make it, I uh, only use the uh, staples that I have at home, and pork is not usually one of them for me. Um, the uh, crust is uh, uh, a homemade crust uh, made by uh, uh, incorporating uh, some flour, butter, as well as uh, kind of like unusual, but I also add a little bit of vinegar to it uh, for and water and egg and it becomes like such a so so flaky like it just comes falls apart and so it's it's difficult to cut but the meat itself I put that in a uh, uh, a big cast iron frying pan with onions a bit of garlic and I uh, fry the meat all together and then I uh, Add a, because the meat is dry, I add a little bit of oil to make it not so dry. And uh, then I um, add celery, I add uh, a little bit of grated carrot, and I cook it really, really well together. To make it stick together, I add a little bit of flour. I let it cool, and uh, I prepare my pie, my pie crusts, and then I fill them and put the crust on top and and bake it. Usually I will serve this with gravy and uh, back then we ate it with gravy. Right now I think sometimes I like it with ketchup. I don't know if I should say that. But anyways this is the uh, traditional uh, traditional untraditional uh, tourchere. Pickles I made from the uh, Cucumbers from my garden, they're with dill and garlic. And then again, cannot have a meal without traditional pickled beets. I added some um, cloves in there to give it a different flavor. It's kind of like a spicy flavor. Then we have pickerel. And uh, this was ju just fried in a little bit of butter. And of course, we have our tea. Can't have a meal without tea. Um, for desserts, we have some cornbread. And uh, the reason the cornbread is for dessert is because there's sugar in there it's, and it's, it tastes sweet. Then we have the uh, plum pudding, which would be called the puccina sac, I guess, for some people. And with that, we have a sauce that we just pour over. Once it's hot, the sauce just melts on top of the, uh, the pudding. And then it's uh, just scooped and put in a little dessert dish. This is uh, a fruit-based and it has to be, uh, it has to ferment. Basically the fruit have to all ferment together. And um, the longer you leave it, the more the the spices, the fruit, uh, blend together to give it a really, really good flavor. And so this would be prepared weeks ahead of time. 
and uh, put in a, a, a bag, um, sometimes it was a, a, whatever bag they had, a pillowcase sometimes, they would put it in a pillowcase and they would wrap it, they, 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 would, they would wrap it, tie it at the top and hang it and just leave it in there. And, and uh, then once they, uh, they figured it was, you know, a week, two weeks maybe, and they would put it in the uh, in the pan and bake it, and it, the the loaf would stay round like this, just like the bag. And uh, of course, they would serve it with the uh, the sauce, the the nice uh, warm sauce. Not warm now, but it's warm sauce. And uh, yeah, it was enjoyed by a lot of people. If you like fruit, fruit in your cake, and we have the Indian bread in the middle here. And the Indian bread is made of molasses. We traditionally call it molasses, but I've seen the recipe, it's called Indian bread. And then we've got some shortbread with some fruit and some regular sugar cookies. Mm -hmm. This would be our meal um, that uh, was uh, prepared. Um, once this uh, uh, table was set, we would sit down and uh, have a meal with uh, our grandparents. And, um, but before we did that, nobody did anything else or wished anybody a Happy New Year until we went and uh, knelt in front of our grandfather or my mom, her dad. Everybody had a standing one behind the other and then you would go and you'd kneel in front of grandpa and ask for his, his blessing for the year, which, uh, you know, he graciously did. And I very much miss that now that he's passed and uh, nobody's kept on that tradition anymore. It was lost when he went. Um, once we had our meal, we left much of the food out. We didn't clean up too much, just the dirty plates. We left the food out and then uh, people started uh, to, um, to come. My grandpa and my uncles went out at midnight and they shot the, uh, the, uh, the gun. And uh, one was shot into the east, to, no, to the west to uh, say goodbye to the old year. And then the other one was shot pointing to the east to welcome in the new year. And uh, again, that pretty much died once my grandpa went. Um, shortly after the people started coming, I would say they would hear the uh, people coming on their sleighs, they would hear the, the bells of the horses uh, as they're traveling down the, uh, the uh, snowy road to come to visit and uh, participate in the, uh, the food. And of course, there was always drink, uh, whatever that was called, I think it was called a piquette, which was uh, some homemade brew of some sort whether it be wine, beer, or whatever you want to drink. If you didn't want to drink that, then they would offer you tea, of course. Um, and then the uh, celebration lasted well into the night. The fiddle would come out, and uh, it would last into the night and into the morning. And uh, some of us slept, some of us partied, and, uh, and it went on and on until the next morning we cleaned up a little bit and more people started coming. And it went on till, I would say, 7, 8 o'clock at night. And that's when the, uh, the, the festivities stopped and um, that, that was it. We would go from... Um, I guess from before midnight right down to the next morning and, and partied. And uh, we don't do that anymore and kind of miss it. That is uh, pretty much what I remember from when I was growing up. I tried to keep tradition as much as possible with my family, but um, because of the circumstances, of course, we couldn't be together today. Otherwise, this table would be full. Thank you for listening.
Vic tells the story that they'd celebrate like the, uh, the, the big réveillon type thing. Uh, and then they'd have the uh, head cheese uh, with uh, crackers and they'd have uh, toast and they'd have the boulettes and they'd have the tortières, uh, pickles, uh, all the gourmet settings. Uh, of course, they all had a glass of wine and so it, it made for a, a real festive uh, get together, yes. If you stood outside, you could hear the sound of the sleigh bells ringing through the cold night as families gathered. It was tradition to visit every family in the community. The sound of sleigh bells or the bells on the tapis of the dogs pulling the sled signaled the arrival of visitors. The Métis people always decorated their horse and dog teams with plums, pom-poms, ribbons and bells. We, uh, you know, we, we had several guys, Métis people in town here that uh, used to come. Uh, we used to go all over together, but uh, some of them have passed on and other guys are sick and stuff. So I'm kind of the only one in this town that's doing it. I, I started uh, riding horses when I was three years old and now I'm 78, over 78. So oh, it's been a long time and I started driving uh, the, the teams when I was six years old actually. We used to haul wood with my dad. So I used to drive the horses then. I have a daughter that uh, does stuff with horses but I don't think she was ever uh, here when we did movies. And she has her, her, her little girls, uh, they're like... Uh, uh, four and six years old and they, they even drive horses now too, they started. So I got them going and I built sleighs and wagons for them and and uh, that's how they start. Uh, I don't do it for a living but I help uh, a lot of people, young people, to uh, show them how to drive horses and stuff and I train their horses so it's uh, you know, we we drive them in the winter time on sleighs and in the summer time on wagons. So we have uh, different wagons. Uh, but uh, yeah, I got into pipelining, and so I got, I always did it anyways when I was home. But in the 35 years that I pipeline, I was I wouldn't do it as much. But uh, anytime I came home, I I I did drive horses. We've been trail rides all over. It's got one all over Mandova, uh, south uh, west of, uh, of uh, Moose Jaw. Uh, we had a lot of fun there. Uh, it was really nice in the in the hills, and so that was a, a good ride. We 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 were out there for five days, but it was 35 above every day, except one day was 40. So. It was, but we still really enjoyed it. It would uh, cool off at night, like that was probably one of our better, better trips that we did with horses. As more people arrived at the home, you would be greeted with guns firing into the air to welcome them. You would be welcomed with a bon anis and receive a kiss and handshake from everyone in the house, young and old. In some very traditional families, it was customary to receive a blessing from the elder in the home upon arrival. Often the celebrations would go all night long.
when mum was alive, uh, we'd uh, have a, a celebration uh, in, in the evening. Uh, then some of our kids were able to come with their, their children, and, but we couldn't all be together at the same time because uh, we wouldn't fit in the house. But uh, we kind of talked to each other and who was able to go and stuff. So, but we'd get together and have a meal, uh, just, a, just a, a gathering of, uh, of, of being together and uh, shared uh, stories and uh, yeah, when had a few drinks. And so yeah, it was quite a, a nice, good feeling to get together. Play another one. Yeah. Sure. I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do apple. Oh, okay. Can we do that one? Hey. Hey, yeah. I, 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 I've been told. I've been told. Let's play it in a different key this <laughs> B flat. Yeah. Ooh, okay. Oh, okay. A is better for me. <laughs> Is it hot in here or is it just yeah, it's, 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 yeah, it's pretty warm, yeah. <laughs> Gotta turn down the heat, Mom. Nice dancing. You guys are just squealing up there. Yeah, yeah, okay. Who's gonna play yeah. a fiddle tune now? Let's pass the buck around. Kenny D can play a fiddle tune. <laughs> okay, we'll try this one. I don't know it, but I'm gonna try it. <laughs> Give her. Okay.
I remember learning that song off of him on the guitar. Uh, All set? Yep. All set. Two, three, two, and...
sound like See? I've been, I even sound like I've been drinking. See, and I'm, <laughs> I'm not the only one sweating. No, you're not. You're not. At our house, we had um, we had some music, but it was not too too celebrated too 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 much. But joining with the Bowden family, there was a lot of card playing activity. Oh yeah, and um, that was something that was new for me. And um, yes, card playing and, and luncheon with all the. Uh, the, the traditions of the yeah. said and all that. Always had that for snack, even though it wasn't a meal. Come on! See?
Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Are you okay? Me. I'm gonna I'm gonna record that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the best. Studio, uh, right. The best of Kenny D. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm gonna make the CD. <laughs> what can I do for you, Kenny D? Well, I have a request. Yeah. What would you like to hear? I'd like to hear some Kenny D. <laughs> my favorite line. <laughs> you guys are all playing. He actually and they come up to the stage and I said, Hey, can you, do you guys do request? He said, What do you want to hear? <laughs> I want to hear something by Kenny D. <laughs> <laughs> He actually phoned the radio station every all the ATR and requested himself. <laughs> but I was a little bit tipsy though. Was, yeah. Well yeah, that was already what, eleven o'clock Saturday morning. That's right. You were already harder than that to take you. <laughs> One, two, three, four. You got your bag. I'm gonna sing it. Yeah, let's do it. Can you find somebody new? I thought I never would. I can't forget you.
Well, as I'm getting older, I realize that, uh, man, I wish we could all get, al get along and uh, be more kind to each other and more helpful to each other and uh, just uh, be more generous, be more considerate, uh, be outgoing to celebrate life because, man, it is great. <laughs> Holy moly. Holy moly. Holy I forgot Jeepers. Oh, no. I can touch I can. Oh, you did it not <laughs> Jingles all the way Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse 
<laughs> hey, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle bells. <laughs> oh, what fun it is to ride in one horse open sleigh. Hey, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in one horse open sleigh. Often the celebrations would go all night long and on New Year's Day everyone would gather at the church. As is our custom, we will close with a prayer from our elder. Thank you for joining us today as we bring you our traditional Métis New Year Day celebrations. I am sure many of you will find similar customs in your own celebrations. Happy New Year. One, two, three.
Happy New Year! Happy New Year to everyone. Thank you, Lord, for giving us a brand new year ahead. We all have 365 days ahead of us. Help us fill them with good things that makes us and others happy and fulfilled. May it bring fresh insights, great hope, a willingness to learn and grow, a wealth of gratitude, new and understanding and acceptance and unparalleled love. Thank you for the gift of life. Amen.